This is Jha and you are watching chapter 7 which is on gas laws. Before we go into the study of gas laws, we must know what gases are and how kinetic theory of gases applies to it or the kinetic theory applies to gases. The molecules of a gas are in constant random and straight line motion except when they collide with each other or the walls of the container. The gas molecules are tiny compared to the distance between them and their volume is negligible compared to the volume of the container. And this has important meaning, negligible. That means volume is zero as compared to the volume of the container. The gas molecules do not exert any attractive or repulsive forces on each other except during collisions. In other words, there is no attraction or repulsion between the molecules of a gas. The collisions between the gas molecules and between the molecules of the gas and the walls of the container are perfectly elastic. That is, there is no loss or gain of kinetic energy. The average kinetic energy of the gas molecules is proportional to the gas's absolute temperature and it is the same for all gases at a given temperature. The reason is believe that gas molecules are point masses and points do not have any length, breadth or height. There are no dimensions to a point. So the volume is zero. But we will find out in higher classes that this is not so. And let us go to the study of property of gases. Gases are a form of matter with special properties. The molecules of a gas are considered to be point masses, as I already mentioned, that have no volume. This is because a point is a dimensionless entity. It has no length, no breadth, no height. They are highly compressible due to large intermolecular spaces between their molecules. A small amount of gas can expand to fill a given volume, no matter how large it is. They take the shape of their container in doing so. Due to the large spaces the gases occupy, their densities are lower than solids and liquids. Weak intermolecular forces help their molecules spread over a large area, a very important point here. The molecules of a gas collide among themselves and with the walls of its container. The collisions per unit area of the wall is a measure of its pressure. Pressure, temperature and volume and number of moles of a gas are measurable and related to various gas laws as we are going to see. So we can see the same number of gas molecules occupy this volume and the same number of the gas molecules can be compressed into a much smaller volume as shown in B. So they are highly compressible. Now we come to the Boyle's law and deal with it in some details. Boyle's law or pressure volume law because it relates pressure with volume. Bob Boyle was a 17th century pioneer of modern chemistry. He is best known for finding out the relationship between volume of a gas and pressure, that is the external pressure applied on the gas. 
known after him as Boyle's law or pressure volume law. The law states, the pressure of a fixed mass of a dry gas varies inversely as its volume when the temperature is kept constant. So, there are three entities or three parameters which describe a gas completely. They are pressure, volume and temperature. To see the relation between pressure and volume, Robert Boyle kept temperature, the third entity, constant. So mathematically, this law can be expressed as P proportional to 1 by V. Or removing the sign of proportionality, we have P equals K into 1 by V, where temperature is constant, or transposing V to the other side, we have PV equals K. K is a constant depending on the amount of gas and its temperature. That must be known to all the students who are planning to appear in some sort of computations later on. Graphical representation of Boyle's law is also very important. <coughs> We have pressure versus 1 by V. 1 by V is plotted on, on this x-axis and pressure is plotted on y-axis. The line between them, 1 by V, not V, but 1 by V is a straight line passing through the origin as you can see. So as pressure increases, volume decreases, therefore 1 by V increases. The value of fraction increases because, because the denominator goes on decreasing. And there is a straight line you can see passing through the origin, that is 0. Now, when pressure is plotted with V, we have a curved line which becomes parallel to x-axis. As pressure increases, we see that the volume falls, but the fall is not straight. And you see a curve is obtained when we plot the values after experimentation and connect the dots. Now at this pressure, when the pressure is increased, the volume also goes on decreasing and finally you see that this line will tend to become parallel if the two axes and the line are continued or they are stretched. The reason is this is that volume at which gas converts to liquid. So there will be no further decrease in volume, no matter how much pressure is increased. So we get the Boyle's law equation from the previous slide, PV equals K. Therefore, if P is changed to P1, then the volume of the gas V will undergo a change accordingly and become V1. If P increases to P1, V will decrease to V1. So that, again, P1, V1 equals K. Therefore, we can have the equation P1 V1 equals P2, V2 equals P3, V3, and so on. P1, V1 equals P2, V2 is known as Boyle's gas equation or Boyle's law gas equation. Thus, if any three unknowns are given, the fourth can be ascertained using the equation, as we shall see in a few numericals uh, later in this slide.
Charles law or volume temperature law. Jakes Charles in his unpublished works in 1760s formulated this law. It states, the volume of a fixed mass of a dry gas varies directly as its Kelvin temperature when pressure is kept constant. So the third variable or the third parameter is kept constant, that is pressure here. Mathematically, the relation can be written as volume proportional to temperature. When we remove the sign of proportionality and replace it by the sign of equality, we get volume equals kT. This k is a non-zero constant depending on mass and pressure of the gas taken. Or V by T equals k. If the temperature of the gas, if the temperature is raised, the volume increases such that the ratio of the new volume to the increased pressure or to the increased temperature, here it should have been temperature, increased temperature. Increased temperature again becomes a constant because we are not changing the pressure. So we can have V1 by T1 equals V2 by T2. So we can write it like this, V1 by T1 equals V2 by T2. This is for those students who will find a little bit of difficulty in keeping this in their minds. Now, the graphical representation of Charles law. So this is the X axis and this is the Y axis. We have plotted volume increase on Y axis and temperature is plotted on the x-axis. At zero degree centigrade, the gas occupies some volume which is indicated by this point here on the axis. And as the temperature rises, there is a straight line shown here. So V1, T1, V1, T1 always equals K. <clears throat> now when this line, no matter which gas is taken, if it is plotted backwards, extended backwards, it meets the y-axis 273 steps behind. In this quadrant, you know, negative quantity is there because zero, anything less than zero becomes minus. So no matter which gas we take, when this straight line is prolonged backwards or stretched backwards, it meets the x-axis at minus 273 degrees centigrade. And this is known as zero Kelvin. Therefore, proceeding 273 steps forward, we have zero degree centigrade as 273 Kelvin. There is no temperature in the universe less than zero Kelvin. Now, this is the temperature at which all types of motions come to a standstill. Nothing moves because when temperature is zero Kelvin, the energy in the body is also zero. Combined gas law or combined gas equation. From Boyle's law, we have PV equals K. From Charles' law, we have V by T equals K. Combining the two equations, we have PV by T equals K. Or as we increase pressure, volume decreases, temperature increases. So P1, V1 by T1 equals P2, V2 by T2. We can put it in this manner also. 
Now let us see some numericals. A numerical on Boyle's law. A student performed an experiment to measure the pressure and volume of a gas at constant temperature and noted the following. P in MMHG is 100, 125, 200 and then it is Y. Volume was measured in centimeter cube. It is 80 centimeter cube x centimeter cube 40 and 32 and the question is calculate x and y the solution since the temperature is constant Boyle's law is used there is no mention of temperature here it is constant and it is said in the question also therefore Boyle's law will be used if you're using p1 v1 we have 100 by 80 equals 125 by x and solving for x transposing 125 on the other side we have 125 into 80 divided by 100 which is 100 centimeter cube so so we have 100 centimeter cube We correct this. This is P one B one, and this is P two V two. Solving for V2, we have 100 into 80 by 125. So 25 fours are 100 and 25 fives are 125 and cancelling 80 by 5 we have 16 and this is 64 centimeter cube so x is 64 centimeter cube now this is wrong <clears throat> similarly finding y we have Again, this is uh, wrong. We can do it in this manner. 200 into 40 equals y into 32. or y equals 200 into 40 and divided by 32. So this goes, this goes five times by eight and this is 4. So 8 fives are 48 for the 32. And this is 50. So 50 into 8 50 into 8 is uh, 400 
mmhg. So, we now know if temperature is constant, we have to apply Boyle's law and the gas equation or the Boyle's law equation is P1V1 equals P2V2. Uh, let's see uh, another numerical. If the pressure of an 800 centimeter cube gas is tripled, what will be the volume change be? The change in volume is asked. So using P1V1 equals P2V2, temperature is kept constant. There is no mention of temperature here. So it is constant throughout the experiment. Let P1 be P. So P2 becomes 3P. There is no numerical value of P. So we have to assume. And the relation between P1 and P2 is that P2 is three times P1. So we can take P for P1 and 3P for P2. V1 is 800 centimeter cube. V2 is asked. So we have P into 800 equals 3P into V2. Calculating V2, we have 800 divided by 3 because P and P cancel. So 800 divided by 3 is 266.67 centimeter cube. Therefore, the change in volume is this much. And the volume decreases to one third. 266.67 is about one third of 800. This is a numerical on Charles law. <clears throat> it is very important to keep in mind these lines. While solving numerical, it is important to keep units the same. You have to read carefully temperature given in Kelvin, then temperature given in degree centigrade. All temperatures while solving must be in Kelvin. So units must be same. Kelvin temperature is advantageous because volume cannot be a negative number. If I put minus 250 degree centigrade or calculate volume, it will be a negative number. Volume cannot be negative. The least is zero. It cannot be reduced further. So using Celsius scale, we may get volume or pressure as a negative quantity, which is meaningless. Pressure also cannot be negative. It can be zero. Zero means no pressure. There are no negative temperatures on Kelvin scale. Zero indicates that there is no energy in the system. There is nothing below zero on Kelvin scale. So let's see the numerical. Calculate the volume of air expelled from a vessel containing 0.4 liter of it at 250 Kelvin when heated to 27 degrees centigrade. See, temperature is given in two units, 250 Kelvin and 27 degrees centigrade. This is the catch. Now we have to come out of it. And what we do is we convert this into Kelvin because of what I have stated here. So there is no mention of pressure. So it is assumed to be constant. Hence, Charles law is applied. Volume of the vessel, 0.4 liters. T1 is 250 Kelvin. V2 is asked. T2 is calculated by adding 27 to 273. And it is 300 Kelvin. Now using Charles law, V1 by T1 equals V2 by T2. We have 0.4 divided by 250 equals V2 by 300. And then transposing the numbers on one side and keeping V2 on the other side, we have 
fall into 300 divided by 250, which is 0 0.48 liters. So the volume expelled from the vessel is 0.48 minus 0 0.4 because 0 0.4 is the initial volume. Any increase will be expelled from the vessel. So difference between them tells us that 0 0.08 liters has been expelled at the new temperature. The rest 0.4 is still retained by the vessel because that is its volume. 